Hi, welcome to part 14 of my videos on Zinc Ultra Scale Plus and Peta Linux. The title of this video is Graphical User Interface and Qt Applications. This is section 2 of the videos I'm creating on this topic. And these videos are in part supported by Blickfeld. Blickfeld is a company here in Munich. They create high performance LiDARs. Please visit their website. In this video, we want to build Peta Linux with basically the graphical user interface enabled. There are some considerations before we start. First of all, you need a very good network connection. What I have here for, for my video is a robust one gigabit internet connection. And at uh, one point, if you don't have a good internet connection, then you can download the SSA cache artifacts from the Xilinx website. You can download this. It can be slow. It doesn't need to be fast. It can take some longer time. And then when you have this, you can use this during Petal Linux build. And this allows Petal Linux to not to get connected to internet for building Petal Linux. Otherwise, what I will do in this video, I will directly go ahead with the normal build process with Petal Linux, which results in Petal Linux to have a lot of network accesses, a lot of data should be downloaded. In this case, if you don't have a good internet connection, then it's going to be slow and it may get interrupted several times. Another important uh, point is your, your disk you need to have enough free space. I will show you shortly how much space you need and preferably you need to have a solid state device. This is our project folder and these are all of the um, um, basically folders we have in the deadly variable. And this one, Petalinux ZCU104, is the one that we build Petalinux inside. I have already done this. I have already built Petal Linux completely. I will delete this complete folder in this video and I will do everything again. But before I delete it, I can look what's the disk usage for this folder. So as you see here, the complete build takes something near 68 gigabytes. So on your disk, you need to have this free space available. This is my Petal Linux build. A standard Petal Linux folder structure. We have talked about this before. We will briefly discuss it later, but I will delete it completely. So I come here, rm minus rf Petal Linux 01, and we build it again from scratch together in this video. So before I continue with Petal Linux build, there's one other point, and that is many of you probably do not have basically a Linux notebooks or Linux running computers. You have computers which are running Windows and you want to run VirtualBox or VMware on these systems. And I have the experience of compiling Petal Linux also on VirtualBox. It's possible. It should work. The problem I had was with the network connection. Petal Linux makes a lot of network connections. So make sure what I was doing, for example, I created several network connections for my virtual box. It had four network connections all active at the same time. And it may take longer, but it should be possible. It should work fine. So here we are in our Petal Linux folder, and I want to build Petal Linux for ZU104 from scratch. As I told you, we use the provided Xilinx port support package for building Petal Linux. Now, in my experience, I had projects in which I have not used any board support package and I have added graphical user interface to my Petal Linux. So um, the fact that we are using the BSP right now, it eases our task, obviously, but it doesn't mean you can't do it without the BSP. So if you have a custom build Zinc Ultra Scale Plus board, then you can also have the graphical user interface. It's not that difficult. All you need to do is selection of proper packages for the Petal Linux root file system, and then a good and correct device tree. First of all, I need to source the uh, Xilinx tools. And that's the six, setting 64 file inside the Petal Linux folder. Now I have created a script in my root folder, and this script does all of that. So we can look at the script briefly. I think I have shown this before. It basically sources the script files, the, the, in, the required initialization the script files for Vivado, for Vitis, and for Petal Linux. And now I can run Petal Linux create minus type project name. I will give it a name. 
and now I will give him the location for the BSP file that I have downloaded from Xilinx. This is where my BSP is. So Petalinux 01. This is the standard Petalinux folder structure. And now next step is I should give the Petalinux the hardware configuration that I have for my Vivado project. So next command would be Petalinux config. Get hardware description and the hardware description file is inside the xsa folder this one step is important because if you don't do it and you continue with building petal linux then petal linux makes a default assumption for the hardware that you have on your pl so it's important that you tell petal linux what's the arrangement of the hardware that you have on the pl for now i don't make any changes here and I, for now, I just go ahead with Petalinux build. This can take a lot of time. During this build process, Petalinux may fail. I will pause the recording, and if that happened, we, we, we can look at it together. All right, Petalinux failed during the build process. This is totally expected, and the feature has made a failure. Basically a problem with network connection. Petalinux has this problem. So all I do, I again call the Petalinux build command. So I issue the command and it may fail again. We may need to repeat this two, three times. All right, the build is finished. It took something near two hours for me to finish the build. I have seen guys that this build takes for them something near 12 hours or 10 hours. I didn't do anything special during the build. I just, sometimes it failed and then I ran the Petal Linux build again. Now, next step is, is important and that is we want to be able to build Qt applications for our um, basically ZC104. So I need to tell Petal Linux include also Qt libraries. So I'm gonna configure the root file system of my Petalinux. And in Petalinux package groups, in package group, Petalinux Qt, I'm gonna enable these two options, Petalinux Qt and, and populate SDK Qt5. I'm gonna enable these two and I'm gonna build Petalinux again with these two options enabled. Obviously, this build will be shorter because Petalinux has already compiled a large portion of the content that it needed. Okay, now we have basically compiled the required files, libraries for running Qt applications on our Petalinux. Now I can tell Petalinux to build the SDK that I need when I'm building Qt applications here at PC site. So when I use the Qt creator environment to create my Qt applications, which I want to run on the board, then I need a set of basically compiler, libraries, and I can tell Petalinux build this software development kit for me so that I can use it. So now Petalinux will go ahead and populate the SDK for us.